Nicknamed the City of Lights, it is one of the most visited capitals of the world. Paris continues to occupy its own place in the world of fashion, luxury and fine dining. Tourists, whether foreign or French, love the city for its monuments, authenticity and, of course, its romantic side. In 2017, there were 49.3 million overnight stays in Paris, a jump of 12.2% over the previous year, according to the Tourism Office and the Paris Congress. Today, in a few moments, we will take a trip to discover a magnificent five-star boutique hotel located in the heart of Saint-Germain-des-Prés, the Bel Ami. Then we take you to the Carré d'Or, where Gérard Fèvre opens the doors to one of his latest creations. Luxury real estate is doing well in the French capital, and his renovated apartments that have never been lived in and are sold key in hand are selling like hot cakes. We'll also pay tribute to a great name in Parisian fashion who left us in 2008, Monsieur Yves Saint Laurent. A museum dedicated to his work opened its doors in October 2017 under the guidance of Pierre Berger. We take you to 5 Avenue Marceau. Paris also has world-renowned places and squares like Place Vendôme. The most beautiful jewelry brands have chosen to call it home. Spotlight today on the house of Goralska. Before ending our day discovering the capital, we sip a cocktail on the quays. But to begin, we immerse ourselves in the atmosphere of the Bel Ami, an intimate, elegant and contemporary hotel, located in the heart of Saint-Germain-des-Prés, a two-minute walk away from emblematic addresses like the Café de Flore and Les Deux Magots. Staying in this emblematic neighborhood is to emerge yourself in the Paris of artists. We find a sensibility in the lobby with this extra-large mirror surrounded by chrome, two bubble chairs overlooking the shelves of the great library, whose books come from neighborhood publishers. The hotel itself was created in an old printing house where the first copy of Guy de Maupassant's famous novel, Bel Ami, was published in 1885. The spirit we find at the Bel Ami is that of a grand Parisian apartment, that of someone in love with arts and design. In the 108 rooms and suites, it's the same feeling. The television is like a work of art. The desk and the nightstands made of natural oak dressed in an orange lacquered glass top recall a very graphic universe. But the hotel from Group B Signature Hotels and Resorts is also a place of life and meeting. In the lobby, of course, but especially at the bar. The glass canopy creates a natural skylight. The bartenders offer creations they know how to talk about with a passion. As for sports fans, they can head to the fitness room while others enjoy the sauna or the massage parlor. Once refreshed, you will then be ready to conquer the capital and stroll through the luxury German protein shops, unless you prefer the Champs-Élysées or Avenue Montaigne, the mecca of Parisian luxury that leads straight to the Place de l'Étoile and the famous Arc de Triomphe, visited each year by more than 1.5 million visitors. Its construction dates back to 1806, at the request of Napoleon to celebrate his victory over the emperor at Austerlitz. Architects Chalgrin, Just and Blouet designed and built the monument. Under the arc is the tomb of the unknown soldier, whose flame is lit every evening at 6.30 p.m. Lighting the flame is a bit what designer Gérard Fèvre does every day. We've arranged a meeting with him a few hundred meters from there. Parisian luxury real estate is today in good shape and demand is pouring in from the four corners of the globe, according to industry specialists. For the luxury of luxe, or ultra-luxe, we are in a 
For luxury, even ultra-luxury real estate, we're indeed in more than a recovery. We're in the second most sought-after city by foreigners looking for a pied de terre. We're just behind London. We're third in terms of price behind London and New York. So really today, luxury real estate has recovered. We have a clientele today that's acquiring and coming back. Americans first, a few Chinese. We don't see any Russians anymore. And we always have our share of clientele from the Middle East. A few Swiss, Italians, English. So it's really a market that's once again very strong. Luxury real estate, meaning with prices higher than 25 to 30,000 euros per square meter, only really represents about 40 properties sold per year. The Middle Eastern clientele prefers the triangle d'or. That's a fact. While American, Italian or Swiss clients prefer more authenticity. Let's say, meaning they prefer the 6th and 7th districts, and also a bit of the Ile Saint-Louis. But here, luxury apartments meeting the criteria of the rich foreign clientele are rather rare. Between finding the rare property, renovating it and furnishing it according to the buyer's tastes, not to mention taking care of the administrative details, several months or even years can easily slip by. The concept of ready-to-live seems to make sense in this luxury Parisian real estate market. In this market, I have my place. We know that in all it takes about a year and a half, two years, to get your apartment completely finished, which is where our concept comes in. We sell apartments that are already renovated. When we say key in hand, that means entirely redecorated, completely furnished. And all our apartments have, of course, never been lived in. So it allows our clients who fall in love with these apartments to be in their completed home within two months. For the apartment that we find ourselves in today, and this one is 300 square meters with four bedrooms, so it's an apartment for sale by Gérard Favre. Discretion demands that no sales price was mentioned for this apartment that appears to be a true work of art. In Paris, art seems to be at arm's reach on each street corner. In the galleries, the artists' workshops or in the endless number of museums that the capital has, art is available in all its form. While the Louvre is a must-visit place with its some 8 million visitors recorded in 2017, the Orsay Museum or the Hôtel des Invalides and its Army Museum all have undoubtable qualities. At the origin of the Invalides is the Sun King, Louis XIV, who wanted to welcome back injured soldiers and war veterans. Principal beneficiary among these museums since 1905, the Army Museum retraces the military history of France through 500,000 pieces in the collection. Napoleon also left an indelible mark here. His tomb sits prominently under the Golden Dome built by Louis XIV. This man is also a definitive part of French history, history that has been sewn by hand, that of Yves Saint Laurent. Close to 10 years after his death and more than 15 years after closing his Haute Couture House, the Yves Saint Laurent Paris Museum is open. This museum is located in the historical mansion of 5 Avenue Marceau, where for nearly 30 years, from 1974 to 2002, the creations of this genius of fashion were made. Over more than 450 square meters, this continually updated presentation, alternating between a retrospective and thematic temporary exhibitions, reflects the wealth of this unique heritage preserved by the Pierre Berger Yves Saint Laurent Foundation. We see all his passions for literature, theater, and of course for fashion through his paper dolls, for example, silhouettes cut out of magazines and for which he had fun designing a whole wardrobe. A few of his most beautiful creations are exhibited in this forever cozy atmosphere. A symbolic accessory is this heart jewel that Yves Saint Laurent placed on his favorite model from each collection. I love that a dress is sober and that the accessory is crazy, he said, and this is a wonderful example. The next door takes us into the daily life of Yves Saint Laurent. 
It's in this studio that the designer discovered, validated or corrected his creations. The models first wear a blank canvas, meaning the clothing in an ecru cotton version. Then he checked it in the mirror to validate its silhouette. It's a historical room containing objects from the time. His library, his desk, his glasses. In short, a place full of history and emotions that will undoubtedly interest fans of haute couture. Open Tuesday to Sunday from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., it's located at 5 Avenue Marceau. We now make a quick stop at the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, the most visited monument by tourists with no less than 12 million visitors in 2017, according to numbers published by the Tourism Office and the Paris Congress, before walking along the Seine and turning 90 degrees towards one of the most precious squares of the French capital, Place Vendôme. Haute couture, fine jewelry and fine watchmaking are found side by side around the emblematic column, erected by Napoleon and built with the bronze of enemy cannons. Leading us directly to Place Vendôme, Rue de la Paix has attracted the good graces of the biggest luxury houses. At number 12 is the new boutique of a young French jewelry house, Goralska. The DNA is very African at Goralska. The idea is to work the stones and to highlight them in collections that are deeply connected to the elements, nature, and from where the stones were extracted. And you can see here that my boutique is a bit like a symbol of the mine. You have this skylight that can remind you of an open mine. In the showcases, we find creations that are as splendid as they are unexpected. Because while these cut stones have found their rightful place, these raw diamonds seem to also have a story to tell in the Goralska collections, notably in the Empreinte collection. Daughter of a diamond dealer, but a mathematician by trade, the founder and artistic director of the brand has put a few geometric eccentricities in the Coincidences collection. As for spirit that is perpetually overflowing, she has no trouble imagining other quite unique collections. The Pensée collection represents the fact that it's very difficult to stop and think. So this Pensée ring was the first piece of the collection and is round and holds a pearl that rolls around inside and it can never stop turning, just like a thought. Bearers of important messages, some pieces tell us a story, sometimes a painful one. Corinne Evans revisits that torturous road that caused her to create her labyrinth of the soul. You have grills that represent the concentration camps. You'll find tears. Only people who survived this, and even the generations after, have a hard time speaking of these things. And to do that, it's like crossing a river. You must pass a certain point. And when you cross this river, you are able to cry and express your feelings and finally see the light in you. The light is represented by a stone, of course. La lumière est représentée par une pierre, bien évidemment. A diamond can also make way for a blue sapphire, the color of serenity and the soul. The Olivier collection that is already richly designed welcomes a few innovations. As for the pendant called Le Printemps des Femmes, meaning the Spring of Women, it's inspired by the Arab Spring in Egypt and represents a rebellious woman in a plunging neckline. This piece is given to the winner of the Goralska Prize, handed out every two years, rewarding a brave and courageous woman who has contributed to humanity. It should be noted that Goralska also contributes. How? By donating all its profits to several associations such as Positive Planet or the Events Foundation, which works for peace in Europe through the training and teaching of school children. By choosing to buy jewelry from this young French jewelry house, it's a double whammy, real pleasure connected with a wonderful, kind action. That's how we leave Rue de la Paix and its sparkling jewels to head in the direction of the Keys, where every Parisian likes to unwind with friends over a drink at the end of the day. We pass by the Trocadero Gardens and its famous Warsaw Fountain and its 20 water cannons. Some sculptures crown it all off, 
Golden Horses, A Bull's Head, Traverses, Lum, and Baquets, La Femme. On the other side of the Eiffel Tower, the Champ de Mars Park, opened in 1780, stretches between the military school and the Eiffel Tower. A prestigious place that has held great national events, Parisians and tourists gather on its lawns to picnic, play music, and at night admire the glitter of the Eiffel Tower. A monument that we can also admire comfortably along the banks of the Seine, sipping a good cocktail. The Monsieur Mouche is certainly one of the most exclusive rooftops of the capital. With its restaurant Le Club, it is once again ready to give its all. The terrace, embellished with olive trees, is open for business. It offers a beautiful view over the Seine, the Orthodox Cathedral of Paris, the Alexander III Bridge and the Alma Bridge, not forgetting, of course, the Eiffel Tower. It's a place dedicated to ancient Parisian ship owner Alphonse Gaston Mouche, an adventurer and researcher of rare alcohol. A perfect place to finish the day and enjoy a Parisian night.